Hi, everyone. Welcome to All About the Joy. Cynthia and Rick are in the house. It's going to be a very intimate evening. Oh. Oh. It's just the three of us, fighties. Oh so we're going to uh, talk about a few subjects. I just want to finish up one little thing that we were talking about before Rick joined us in the green. I was going to say the greenhouse. <laughs> 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 the green room. And uh, just say this for a moment. Um, we were talking about the show 911 and 911 Lone Star. And where did we finish with that, Cynthia? I, uh, let me I think we were talking about Grace and her husband. There's two different ones? Oh, yeah, yeah, so there's 911, oh, no. which is all in Los Angeles, right? And guess where the other one is, which Texas. is 911 Lone Star. Texas. Yeah, and it takes place in Austin, because even I noticed some places in there. Um, mm. But, Cynthia, oh, I know what I asked you. Which one did you like more? Oh, the original. Which is 911. Yeah, the yeah. LA one, yeah. Yeah. Look, it, I didn't mind watching the rest of 911 Lone Star, but it wasn't as easily for me to digest is all I'm going to say. So I did it because you forced me to. <laughs> no. Rick, how are you? Doing good. Doing good. How's everybody? Yeah. yeah. So, Rick, I sent you a demo draft of our store. Mm -hmm. uh, so it's not up yet. It's not live, but, uh, we always test the products before we give them out <laughs> to everyone. So hopefully in the next couple of weeks, hey, we'll Adam. get to you. Hi, Adam. How are you? Okay. First on our agenda, what was the most joyous thing that happened to you this week? Cynthia, you go first. Okay. I already know what you're going to say. <laughs> <laughs> I think, I think, I think. Um, so everybody knows that I got the job. Yay! <laughs> So on Tuesday, I actually and you're making out, a lot of money. Okay, go ahead. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I sent out an email to all the doctors and all the employees, everybody, so you know, kind of letting them know and everything like that. And what shocked me and actually felt really good was the first person to come up to me and actually give me a hug and congratulate me and everything is a doctor who everyone like is a, is scared of mm. and. Oh. Yeah, because she, like her attitude can change with the blink of an eye. Oh, and she's a great I doctor. Don't get me wrong. Hmm. She's a, she's a great doctor, but she was the first one to come and give me a hug and congratulate me and everything, and that felt great. That's awesome. Yeah. That's really awesome. How did everyone else take it? They must have been. Oh, blown. everyone's devastated <laughs> <laughs> because you did everything, and you've been there how long? Oh, eight and a half years. Wow, that's a long time. <laughs> yeah, but for seven of those years, she's been hating every minute of it. Because <laughs> <laughs> ain't that the truth for all of us, right? Like the first time right. we're like, oh my God, new job, new job. Got to raise, got to this. Yeah, I've been through four managers, um, like doctors leaving, some coming back, new doctors coming in. Definitely new employees. Yeah. yeah. Well, that's why they're bumming because you did everything and you were like the steady person throughout all of it. You know what I mean? Oh, yeah. So we're gonna miss you so bad. Why? Because we're gonna have to work so much harder now. <laughs> oh, not because you miss me. Nice. Like now we have to do some work. <laughs> <laughs> well, well, again, congratulations. I'm I'm really proud of you. And I read your resignation letter. I'm just gonna say this. <laughs> The fact that you didn't ask me to edit or to consider it or whatever, I was Please like, she is so on point to leave. Because <laughs> usually she'd be like, Carmen, before I send this, can you look it over for me? <laughs> and I'll give her like whatever advice I can. But it was so well done, perfect in every Thank single you. way. And I was like, oh, this is because she's on point. She knows she oh, yeah. <laughs> I got to send you the one I sent to all the doctors. And some of them actually started crying when they were reading it. Oh yeah. That's awesome. Hey, so I gotta send you that. Hey Mario. Oh great. He'll be in the room and tan. Mm -hmm, baby. <laughs> cool. Um, Rick, what about you? How was your week and what's something that gave you joy? Uh well, one thing my son sent me a text and I saw there was an attachment. I was like, hmm, what's this? And he got his um official temporary license to <gasps> do the physical therapy now so he can literally do it now part-time part-time for now okay so but I, he's a doctor right but he still has to you have to have go through licenses and all this stuff oh okay so okay. it's good till september he takes the test in july he's smart i know he's gonna pass so that's really cool yay um, other thing I too so was glad. 
What? Yeah. The other thing too was since he's here, and I'm not saying it just because he's here. I really love listening to you and Mario. Your to your uh, private lounge. It was fun. It was good. I even watched School Days. Is that the movie y'all talking yeah, about? Yeah, I love like, that movie. Oh, oh, that is quite a movie. <laughs> I was going to ask about the Mario thing, um, but mm -hmm. what else were you saying? I'm sorry. Yeah, yeah. No, I just, I meant you guys, you know how I am. When you mention a movie, I'm automatically going to see if I can find it and watch it. And so I saw that movie and I was like, oh, wow. Yikes. Yeah. There's some interesting parts in this movie. Absolutely. <laughs> yeah. But remember, but it's, it's, how old is it? I mean. It's yeah. Also For the time. Yeah, yeah. Like a lot of stuff I saw there, that would not fly now. Like no Absolutely way. Absolutely not. No. Yeah. But, uh, but yeah, it was interesting. Thought provoking. So, yeah. Yeah, I, I was surprised that that was uh, like his number three, but I understand mm. why too. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. I think it was his number three, right? I forget. I can't remember now. I can't remember. Now. I think it was his number three. I'm surprised because his favorite movie was The Color Purple. And I'm, I've mm. never heard anyone else but me. I was kind of mad about it too. Like that's my mom. <laughs> like, you know, <laughs> yeah. so it was, it was really well done. Um, and it was fun. And I, I will say this, and I, I'm not surprised by this. But I am. So I don't have a lot of uh, subscribers on YouTube. I don't. But his video, um, the live, uh, I mean, the pod, what am I calling it? The private lounge. It'd be great if I knew my own stuff. But what <laughs> the private lounge with Mario is the most played. And it was like within, I don't know, five days or something. Wow. Yeah, it was really weird. I'm not weird, but I, 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 you just never know what people want to watch. And he's That's just true. so charming and lovely. But the podcast mm -hmm. is like, if my top was Juliana before that was still the top one, Mario's like up here. It's wow. wow. He either has like a huge following. I don't know about, but <laughs> um, I was like, okay, we're going to have Mario part two, three, five. Like, <laughs> <laughs> so Mario's book for the next few months. <laughs> so we're going to do a weekly private lounge with Mario only. <laughs> you know what I mean? like, we are going to do a second one. He, he wanted me to do um, a second one with him so we could talk about some other stuff. Uh, so we, we had already decided we're going to do it, but we're going to do it in a little bit. But it was it was so well done. I was really psyched. Um, wow. Okay, cool. No, you didn't tell us about how your week was at work or life. Oh, uh, work wasn't too, too bad, thankfully. Shorter work week because I was off on Monday, thank God. Um, mm -hmm. Yeah, that's it's those crazy. little things, man. Mm. It really is. So, yeah, it wasn't. I was, I was thinking it was going to be crazy busy on Tuesday because I'm like, I got to deal with whatever Friday, Saturday, Sunday, mm -hmm. Monday, and Tuesday morning. But no, it wasn't bad at all. I was shocked. But yeah, it's been pretty chill. I'm like, thank you, God. <laughs> Oh, you just jinxed break. it. You just said it's been pretty chill. Tomorrow will be a day. <laughs> oh, it's the last day. I don't care. It's the last day of the week. Hit me. Hit me, um, baby, one more time. Right? Um, I So there, there's really kind of two things that happened this week that were great. One of them I put in the email is, so I have a trademark, and people know that it had already been okayed, but you have to get the official certification. Mm -hmm. So it, it's not a big deal, but to me, it just makes me feel so official to have mm -hmm. All About the Joy be trademarked and uh, just fun. Uh, the other thing is the store. Um, I've been working with the logos and just trying to set them up. And it's not that it's that difficult. It's difficult for me. Cause I, I come home if I'm lucky by five, well, Thursdays, I try to come home by like five 30, but usually I'm out till six, whatever. You know what I mean? Like it's just, mm. and especially cause we have this drama going on. It's really hard for me to then edit and da 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 and da da da. And then on top of it, be a quote unquote designer <laughs> for, mm -hmm. for a store. You know what I mean? So I'm excited about that. I also, and no one needs to go to the website yet because it's not finished, but I did change the website. Um, all of your pictures are up there on the front pages. Um, I'm also going to set up the uh, bios for everyone that's next on the page. And then I'm going to set up the store and then we'll force everyone to buy products and go to the website. That will be our next push. No, I'm just kidding. No, I, I'm not going to push anyone to do anything, but I, I just think it looks better. And um, it, I don't know. We'll just see how it goes. So I'm excited about those things, you know? That's really cool. Yeah. Okay. One of the other questions I had, which was kind of random because it happened to me this week. Did someone break your heart this week? Was there something positive that came from this experience? 
Go ahead, Cindy. Mm. I'm gonna break my heart. Um, well, if you don't know, I'm sure Rick does. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Well, look, it break your heart may be the wrong wording. I didn't know how else to say it. Like, I'm so disappointed in something that happened this week with someone. And mm -hmm. it broke my heart because I had so much faith in them. So that's what I mean. I don't mean break your heart like, you know, some romantic relationship. <laughs> Unbreak um, my heart. Oh, my God, who sings that? Oh, Whitney Houston. No. Yeah. Right Unbreak here. my heart? Sorry. No. You don't I know I am this? telling you. She may Tony not be Braxton. Tony Braxton. Oh, Tony Braxton. <laughs> I was like, I was about to fight you. <laughs> I, fight you. you I was, was like, how do you not know? <laughs> you know what? I'm not. And I know. I know Mars going to come in and yell at me. You guys are about to yell at me. Not a big fan. Oh, mm. I am. Believe it or not. I don't believe any. Did she sing some spiritual song? <laughs> no, I just love her voice. She just does something to me. I can't so you, you know when I started not liking her? Uh-oh, did she do something you didn't like? No, I just did that whole cheesy reality show. I was like, okay, no. I'm oh, I didn't see it. Right. Yeah, did you see that, Cynthia? No. no. Yeah, I don't know. She has a great voice, but so doesn't Anita Baker, right? Fly mm. voice. But then once I hear about what she does at the concerts and, you know, I don't know. I lose respect for people pretty easily. Like, like Madonna not showing up at a concert at eight o'clock and showing up at 12 instead oh, at yeah. 12 PM. Ah. And you, you heard that, right? I didn't know. You didn't hear. She, oh, right in Boston. Right. Yes. Yeah. She heard. was three hours late. Wow. If you're yeah. going to disrespect your, and here's the thing. It wasn't one time, right? It's not like, Oh my God, we're so sorry. It's a consistent thing. You know? And uh, another thing that she did in the, uh, in the middle of the concert, she actually stopped the concert because I guess people were smoking in, in oh, the Madonna? arena. Yeah. Oh, yeah. Okay. She stopped the concert and got on the mic and was like, you guys need to stop smoking. It's messing with my vocal cords. Like, yeah, like scolding people. Like, you are in an arena to perform. You really think these people are going are gonna to not smoke? <laughs> well, it's also like there might be a different way to say it or... I don't know. Oh, yeah. like, she was like, like scolding them. Yeah, but but I mean, I look at. I don't want to go to a concert with people smoking all over. Hence, why I don't. Right? <laughs> like, um, I don't like crowds. I don't like people smoking. I hate the smell of pot. You know what I mean? Like, whatever. Unless it's VIP special but seating. That's true, but it's true <laughs> because you don't have to be in the mix. It's true. Mm. VIP, honey. Again, <laughs> calm the <de> bougie. <laughs> I am okay with that. <laughs> I'm good. But I just choose not to go, but it's tone and when it's all about you, right? It's selfish. Mm. And yeah, people are paying. If it was a free concert, do what you want. Scream yeah. at anybody you want. They can walk away, no big deal. But if people are paying hundreds of dollars, you know what I mean? Shoot. Charlie. Oh, my <laughs> man, Charlie. Backstage or no way. See, Charlie is with me. <laughs> He is so with me. I agree 100%. I told you one of my favorite concerts, and, and I'm not like in love with uh, the police or Sting. I, I know Sting's albums, but was going to his concert and being backstage because we were given tickets from somebody's boss in the line of work that we do. And it was pretty incredible. Actually, I don't know why I'm hiding his name. It's Dustin Hoffman is mm. very good friends. So, so one of my friends worked with him and she called me like that day. It was like, what are you doing tonight? I'm like, oh, I'm free. Why? You want to go have dinner? She's like, nope, be ready. I'm going to pick you up in an hour. And I was like, where are we going? <laughs> you know what I mean? So it was kind of cool, but it was cooler because I could enjoy it and not have anxiety, you mm. know? Um, but Madonna got to have everybody who is making someone pay for something and that much money for you to sing your songs. Mm. Mm -mm. Mm -mm. Mm -hmm. I don't think I would take that from anyone. Yeah. Like, and you know, I think Aretha Franklin was a God, you know, Whitney Houston was a God. George Michael could get away with it for sure, but I'd be okay. With it. <laughs> you know what I mean? Or Prince. Prince could probably yell and scream at me. I'd be like, oh my God, thank you. <laughs> I appreciate Prince you. Prince would probably join in. <laughs> yeah. I know. Oh, Frank at the Greek Theater. Wait, 10th row, center. I need backstage still, Charlie. <laughs> That's still too many around me. <laughs> I'm just messing with you. What else are we talking about? Wait a second. 
Mario. Hey. 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 How are you, Mario? I am uh, fantastic. I'm just trying to get my screen together so I can see you guys because I can't see anything. There you go. Hi. Hey. hey. The famous Mario Dawson. Oh, stop it. <laughs> Did you hear what I just said earlier? I, I heard. The podcast is unbelievable. Like, I don't know what you did. You must have lots of family. Yeah, lots of family. Yeah. Yeah. No, you told watch this I, thing. You may not no, I just, you know. I just said, you know, welcome to the cookout. Come on through. <laughs> <laughs> Rick, what did you just say, baby? I said he told everybody in his family, if you don't watch this thing, and nobody's invited to the family barbecue. Yeah. <laughs> nope. Yeah, now welcome to the cookout. You can't have no ribs. That's the trick. <laughs> That's it. You cannot come to the cookout. <laughs> That's awesome. I also want to give Mario some other credit. Uh, so Mario had suggested weeks ago that we should start with talking about what's one of our joy, joyful things that happened that week um, or whatever. And so now after going through my to-do list, I was like, oh, yeah, right, right, right. I got to ask everybody. <laughs> it's, a good, it's, it's a good idea. But it, it, it's a good way to start the show because it's called All About the Joy. So the first thing you want to start talk about is joy. And then you can go into everything else, whatever. It doesn't matter. Yeah, no. So see, that's a good piece of criticism. And and, and, and I just want to say this as well. It's how you give criticism or advice. It's that tone that matters. Yeah. You know? And like I said before, I don't, if I don't have respect for you and I don't care who you is and you have <laughs> the bad tone, it's, you know what I mean? Like that to it's me is- It's all in the delivery for sure. Yeah. For sure. But it's a good uh, point because I'll tell you right now, I saw, I, I clicked the video. I was like, okay, the title sounds interesting. I'm listening. I'm listening. I'm going to give you another minute. The topic wasn't discussed still. I was like, okay, bye. Right. True. True. See, so it just, it draws you in. And once you're in, then they'll say, okay, what else are you talking about? You know? Well, you know what the problem is too? I mean, this is, this is interesting because I was speaking to a producer from another podcast or whatever, who has like, thousands like forty five thousand listeners that's like unbelievable wow and, okay because i wanted his uh his advice you know right and he listens to my show which is good which is good but he was saying that you can talk about it being all about the joy or if your podcast is about space or whatever whatever he's like but what needs to happen is the show at some point needs to be branded so that when people come, they already know that's what they're, you know, coming to see. The other problem right. that he said is your show is about something good. And just like the news and just like anything else, people gravitate towards the drama of conflict and whatever. Mm -hmm. And we don't really have that much conflict unless it's funny between each other or whatever, right? We're not really fighting about politics or religion or sex or whatever. So he's like, it's going to be slow. Unless you want to. No, I'm not going to. No, I, there's, there's so much I want to. I mean, I don't mind talking about relationships and, you know, there was a big to-do about penises a couple of weeks ago with Ted. I know, I'm just, look at all of you are like, whatever. <laughs> what is this sex conversation going to be like if you're all doing that? You know what I mean? <laughs> and also, I, I don't want it to be a show that, kids can't listen to you know what i mean and i don't mean children children i mean like my teenage goddaughters or something right like yeah. um so yeah anyways all right wait Rick, wait mario we... what what brought you joy this, this week well not this week but last week you know i was on vacation in mexico so i had a wonderful time that brought me tons and tons of joy we stayed wow. um we we stayed i'm sorry i we stayed at this wonderful place in cancun it's called uh, Pueblo Bonito Sunset Beach. They have um, four or five different resorts that they're all interconnected. We did the all-inclusive. I don't know how Carmen feels about all-inclusive, but this one was pretty great. <laughs> <laughs> Again, I can't help it. <laughs> it, 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 was a, it was a great, great vacation. We got to celebrate my daughter's 21st birthday while we were there. It was Yay. birthday. It was graduation. It was all the things, you know. Um, my anniversary is coming up. What to end of Fourth of July? So you know, my wife. Don't was forget like, well, that. Well, it's kind of hard to how forget. Can you forget the Fourth of July. You you can never forget the Fourth of July. So yeah, we just had a great time. A lot Did of you check the beds real careful. 
I did. I flipped my bed. It was a crime. <laughs> I flipped the bed. We stripped the sheets. I ripped through the closet with my. You have to tell people what that's about. That's so with funny. my with my black light. Yes. yes. <laughs> My wife had me wiping down phones and wiping down the lamps and you ain't gonna wiping get me down today. the doorknob. Boy, I'm telling you, I was like... <laughs> I'm sorry. I've traumatized so many people with the bed bug story, but it's good that no, you know. Listen, I'm going to tell you a secret. Well, it's not a secret because I'm going to put it out here in the public. My neighbor had bed bugs and she had the nerve to say that they came from me and I've lived mm. in my place for 15 years and I never had a bed bug in my life. And she gonna blame it on me. I was like, you know, you are. yeah, she got it. <laughs> and she hasn't done anything about it to like fix the it. owner. The owner did, yeah. Oh, the yeah. owner, of the owner of the building had to, but yeah. You, what you're not gonna do is put that on me. So, crazy. yeah. So she but no, we them and gotten bit or something. Uh, it's not I'm something like, you just like. Oh, hey, I have bed bugs. You're going to have stuffage. Okay. I'm sorry. <laughs> <laughs> hey, <too> much uh, <laughs> why are we being quiet is she is she watching <laughs> her, her, her wall is right next door so i have to clap like uh, <laughs> <laughs> she's listening she got the cup on the wall <laughs> okay okay she must have heard the podcast and everything, and she's like, "Oh, I'm gonna blame it on him." I heard the word "bed bug." Let me see. I he gonna finally admit it. <laughs> yeah. Yeah, well, I'm gonna get him today. <laughs> she's like, "You gonna learn today? I'm gonna get you today. Today, today." <laughs> that's show. That's you. You know. No. But um, no. Okay. Ever, but my my joy my joy was vacation. Um, I heard the question about uh, what made me sad. Um. I didn't say what made you say it. No, wait, well, we haven't yeah. finished with Rick and, and Cynthia. They haven't. Oh, okay. Because I, I was, you know, I was driving. I was just trying to jump in and get in. Oh, you're trying to talk. Okay. Well, they did not here. answer. Did someone. Wait, what? Rick? So he's already here. Might as well roll with it. I, but we've got. We have to. I don't want to be rude. The question. It wasn't what broke your heart this week. What broke my heart? Yeah. Or my disappointed dad. you. What? My father did very much so. Uh, yeah. It's always drama when you have families come together for special mm-hmm. occasions and they don't act right. So it was it was that. Mm-hmm. And so, you know, we've always had an up and down relationship, but he really disappointed me while he was here. And I'm not gonna go into what he did. He knows what he did. And it was, you know, it affected my whole family. But mm-hmm. we moved on. We're good. God is good. So what did you was there anything out of I mean, you seem okay with it, but was there no, some- I'm not okay with it, but I'm going to be, you have to keep moving forward because you can't live in somebody else's trauma. My, his trauma is not my trauma and you can't, I'm, I'm not going to allow anyone to pour their trauma on me and affect my life the way he has in the past. So, mm-hmm. I, you know, God bless him. I understand 100%. Um, yeah. and, and the hardest thing is to realize that just because people are your family or biologically related to you or whatever terminology you need to use to justify mm-hmm. it. Um, yeah. does not mean people have the right to treat you a certain way. And it's really hard for a lot of yeah. people to walk away from family. Yeah. Um, and I think it was the best thing I ever did. Yeah. And um, and I, I love my dad. And um, but we get, we've always had this roller coaster of a relationship. So, mm-hmm. you know, since I was a kid. And, you know, I always want to make sure that I do everything right by my parents, no matter what. Um, and Rick, you know, the Bible says, honor thy father and thy mother, that thy days may be long upon the land, thus saith the Lord. So I was raised in that. I was indoctrinated with that for, you know, to, with, to honor my parents. So I always mm-hmm. do my best to do that. Um, I'm very close to my mom and my dad. And like I said, we have had an up and down relationship. I brought him here, wanted to make sure he was here for my daughter's graduation. Things did not go the way we expected, but that's okay. Mm-hmm. But that's all right. So that was my well, sad part. Well, well, good for you for finding a way to deal with it. Yeah, for sure. Everyone has to, because you can't make your someone else's trauma your trauma. People because do it all the time. They try. Yeah. Yeah. And it's okay. We move forward. Yeah. You gotta be. My dad's passed, but there's nobody on this planet Earth that ever could get me as angry, riled up, emotional as my father. 
Nobody. Yeah. Ooh, let me try. Let me try. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> Sorry. Can't do it. Sorry. Mm. It can't happen. Rick, yeah. Was there anything that disappointed you this week, but you found something positive out of it? Or did anyone um, romantically disappoint uh, you? No, I'm just kidding. Oh, <laughs> oh, get him all through. Come on in the room. Well, Let's talk about it. it. broke your heart. So everyone always thinks like that means like a romantic thing. I just mean anyone in person. When you, I wasn't, I wasn't sure I was going to say, but then we said the word romantic. It sparked a memory. Uh-oh. And this happened today. A oh. woman. Oh, again, come on, God! What revealed? This, <laughs> is from, <laughs> this is from Periscope days. This woman. Now she didn't say it to me, but she said it to others who told it to me because you know nobody could keep a secret. This woman said, God told her that I was going to be her husband. And I'm like, well, until God tells me, <laughs> you are delusional. He, and did. he didn't put me in that conference call. I didn't get that conference call. Now, I, once in a while, she'll hit me up, pray for me, blah, blah, blah. Today, I got hope she ain't watching because she's going to hate me. Today, she sent me a message. Uh, my landlord is going to kick me out tomorrow. Do you have any money so I don't get kicked out? I'm like, do I have the word bank on my forehead? No. <laughs> who, told you, who told you I had money? I mm-hmm. know. You thought you were already her husband. <laughs> uh, you are clean. <laughs> <laughs> playing alimony or something. <laughs> that was disappointing, I guess. Yeah. You are cleaved. If she's asking you for money now, come on. Yeah. Hmm. That's weird. I wonder why people think it's okay to do that. I had that happen with a couple of friends friends from school who mm. logged on to Facebook, added me as their friend or whatever. And I was like, Oh, we went to school together, whatever. And then like the next day an email, and this happened not just once or twice. It happened like three times. Cynthia, I'll tell you who they are later. Um, Cause I know you know them. It's that weird thing where they, they just uh, look at whether you have money or not. I would never not have spoken to someone for like 20 years or 10 in my case, because I'm not that old. No, I'm just kidding. <laughs> but like 20, one of them was like 30 years ago. So like high school or whatever. And ask me for money. I, I guess you'd have, you're probably in a very tough place. And so mm-hmm. you're asking everyone, but I don't know. I've never been in that kind of position. And even when I was a kid and homeless, I would never ask anybody for money or help, I guess. But mm-hmm. I would take help. But. But I just, I'm not a kid. We're adults. There has to be a relationship, you know? Yeah. So did you send her the money? I, again, I don't <laughs> got the word bank on my forehead. No. No. <laughs> oh, and then another person. This was today, too. On Venmo, I got a message saying a request for money because he can't get to work today or tomorrow unless he gets money. I don't know if it's for gas or whatever. And I did send him money. Uh, Twice, actually. Not big amounts, small. Is this someone then, you know? Barely. And then, but then the last time, he said, the first time, I was like, this is a gift because your kids are going to be hungry and you know, I feel bad. Second right. time, he says, I'm going to pay you back. Well, he never paid me back. And now you're going to ask me, now he sent me a Venmo request for money. I'm like, not a he request. never even paid me back. Wow. The first time. Yeah, I almost said what I was be. thinking. It it might be um, a scammer. Yeah. Hey, Kevin. Hi, Kevin. Well, hey, I'm Melanie. A, I'm, I'm gonna, well, Alma said it might be a scammer. Yeah, wow. but I'm going to tell you, we have a we have a, a friend who uh, just reached out to us and said, hey, I'm doing this. Can you send me some money? Just randomly out of the blue. And I said, um, well, not right now because I have other things going on. My family, you know, this is when my daughter's getting ready for school, getting ready to graduate. I said, we just started school. Things, you know, have other issues. No, I can't do it. Then they came back again. Um, can you, do you think you can? I was like, no, I can't really do it. Da, 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 da. Then you come back a third time. I said, I'll tell you what. You send me your Zelle information, and when I have it, you'll get it. Uh, you guys are much nicer than I am. No, no. Right. They're, they're still waiting. No, no, I know. Um, <laughs> Kevin just said, can I get a f- Um, Let me read what Melanie um, just said as well. Makes me glad that I wasn't popular in school. I wasn't popular in school at all because I was never really there. Um, But I was not in any group so much, but I don't know. 
It's that people make an assumption about you after they haven't seen you in high school for 20, 30 years because they've looked at whatever images are on social media or whatever or whatever they think they've decided. And yeah, I mean, that's why it was so random. But Mario, the reason why I said you're so much nicer than I am is, well, you and I kind of already talked about this. I'm just like, no, <laughs> I don't give you well, no reason. Yeah. I'm like, no. I, I mean, I can't, I can be a, a straight shooter, but you know, I try to lead with grace first, mm -hmm. but then if you can't catch a clue, then I'll just leave you on red, you know, and then yeah. you I just, just yeah, keep I keep waiting for those three dots. Right. <laughs> Wait, what's the three dots? Huh? Is that an iPhone thing? Well, no, it's just any phone now. Anytime someone's typing, there'll just be three dots and you're still waiting for them oh, to, yeah, yeah. to reply yeah. and you just never reply. Yeah, no. Get that, Cynthia, right? Yeah, they're typing, Sometimes. but you can't see what they wrote yet. But you can tell they're typing something because it goes. Doo, 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 yeah. doo, oh, doo, like doo. on Instagram, I don't get that on my Samsung, but I can I do. see it on Instagram. Yeah. No, I get it on my Samsung too. Oh, I don't know. Oh, is that the chat box thing or chat? Oh, I don't yeah. use it. I still use it the regular way. That's why. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. somebody saw my phone the other day at work somebody was my boss's wife and like when i have my phone and my text messages coming it's really big like i don't even mess with the regular i always make everything really large and people like that's what old people do i'm like i don't care i can read it easily no problem i don't care what you think. but she was laughing she's like carmen what is wrong with you you like an old lady who's your old lady call me anything you want my life is got the bougie old lady now. I do. My life just it's really big, you know. So um yeah, I look at I think it's great that you lead with grace and, and I try to, but I also think sometimes for me anyway, in my past times of explaining too much, I end up then still getting a request again or a even bigger, sadder story, and they don't get the point, you know. And to me, it's a little classless to just see someone again for the first time in years and then be like, in the next breath, I'm really bad. Can you send me money? You know, mm. this person needed, needed bail money and was asking, I guess everyone <sighs> and was asking everyone to give them 500 bucks. <laughs> I know. Cynthia, do you know who it is? <laughs> Like, is she laughing at you or is she laughing at me? Because I'm confused. <laughs> I'm I don't know why I'm thinking of that song. What have you done for me lately? <laughs> oh my god! Yeah, and I was like, that's not gonna make me feel sorry for you at all because I haven't talked to you in ten years, and I don't know what you did, but I'm afraid for you because this will be our. The last fact one. that they told you that it was for bail money, I would have responded like. See you on Monday. Oh right. no, it's a long weekend. See you Tuesday. <laughs> yeah. The first time they like, it, I pretended I didn't even see it. You know what I mean? Like I wasn't even using anything on. Um, it was on Facebook, and oh, your uh, messages weren't connected. You know, to your messenger phone or whatever. Like my, I don't get Facebook messages on my phone. I'm because I still have it disconnected. But when I go onto Facebook, I can see, you know what I mean? Same. And yeah. I, thought, I just made it unread and left it because I was like, mm -mm. and then like, you know, like a day later, they were like, this is what it's for, bail money. I was like, what? Wrong follow-up. Should have no. been, you know, I'm in the hospital. I need help. Maybe no. giving it a breath. <laughs> she has been there with the wrong story. <laughs> <laughs> that was the wrong story. Right. And even like, if it's true, you, you and that suck. This part that that was wrong for a twenty. You are minutes. you are sol because <laughs> you will be you will be waiting. You will keep waiting if you wait yeah. on me. No, it won't happen. Yeah, so that's kind of <laughs> weird, but true, anyways. Wait, Cynthia, you didn't answer. I can't, oh wait, uh, did he like finish? I feel like he didn't finish. <laughs> no, that's pretty much it. Okay, cool. All right, go ahead, Cynthia. Well, I was a little disappointed with one of my coworkers, um, the older woman that works at the front with me. Uh, like, she, yesterday, I, I came home, I was so upset because I literally dealt with everything yesterday on my own because she decided that was the day she was going to clean her desk and get rid of all her old papers, get, you know, do some ordering of supplies. Oh, yeah, the whole day. 
Did she myself. did she say anything when you when you told her that you were moving on and getting a job? Oh yeah, she you know she's she's sad about it because she's one of the ones who's going to have to do some work now. <laughs> yeah, yeah. She, you know, oh. I know. Oh, now, good work. This is gonna sound horrible, but she's also much older. Yeah, she is. She is. You know what this is? <laughs> that's, that's the baby. I mean, violin. <laughs> oh. Oh. I almost said I would have got homesick. <laughs> I would have got homesick. <laughs> I was close, but I really wanted to. <laughs> it's so crazy. Wow. I, I, I would have. I'm, I'm having issues with people of an older generation you know like the what's that generation what's the, the baby, boomers? baby boomers baby yeah. boomers yeah i'm having some issues and not happy about it but like that's why i said that she's older because i okay i called juliana the other day we had a juliana is my goddaughter for those who don't know and she's 15 and i called her the other day and asked her like what does she think as an older, you know, Gen X person, does she think I may or may not be doing that may not be working when I talk to someone of Gen Z generation, you know? Because I was trying to see maybe there's something generational. And she was so cute in her answer because she was like, you know, maybe. And she gave me like this list. And then she was like, you know what? I don't know. <laughs> I was like, I love this kid. You know what I mean? Yeah. Like, why not to me? So it was really cool. It was fun. Um, he said, these kids that? are built different. I don't know. <laughs> she was like, oh, she needs to retire then. You know what? Yeah, I'm trying yeah, not to be old ageless. enough to retire. She definitely is. But it's sad that financially she can't. And this economy. Uh, yeah. Can't. Yeah. Sometimes it's just like that. But if yeah. you're going to continue to work, then you got to be willing to do the work. You understand right. what I'm saying? Learn so. things like this person that I have that's older just d is not techie at all. No. But, and that's not a that's actually not a bad thing. If you then find other ways to let us know what's going on, you can call me. You have yeah. to, you don't if you don't know how to text right or whatever, you don't know how to answer email, so you can call me. And if I don't answer, leave a message. I will get yeah. to it and I'll call you and we can go. So that's what look at. I don't expect everyone to know everything as times change. I know at some point, and right now I can tell you there's some things I don't know. I just just said it right now. Oh, the chat box. You know mm -hmm. what I mean? Because I don't right. know. So I think it naturally happens as we get older, we get wiser, but then we're probably not in on the newest thing happening. So I'm trying not to be ageist because we will be there all someday. Yeah. But you do have to do is find a way to do your job if you're going to keep it. Yeah. That's for as everybody. My, as my grandmother would say, just keep on living here. Just keep on living because you'll get there. You know, because we'll all get there. And again, my word of the day, grace we got to show a little grace to our old and to our elders i know it's hard because it's even for me with my mom you know my mom is, is of a particular woman of a particular age as she says and she has problems with phones and apps now she really she's trying and like she's doing but i can guarantee you next week she's like can you help me with this with this bank app again i got locked mm -hmm. out i'm like mm -hmm. okay well well, what do you what do you do? I'm like, she's trying to do on like like her online bill pay. Now that is she's on the struggle bus for that. She needs a permanent <laughs> bus pass on the struggle bus. <laughs> so because she is struggling, but I have to, you know, as her son, as a, as a younger person, I'm gonna always go. But then what's even better, she has a granddaughter who's even more proficient, but yeah. has less patience. So you got to, you know, because these younger kids, they're so, they're so just tech savvy. They're just doing everything at a thousand miles a minute. They're like, didn't you hear what I said? I said, dude, this X, Y, and Z is it's yeah. just not that simple. You got to slow down and yeah. give them some grace. But yeah. like Cynthia said, you, you got to do the work now. You got to be willing to do, like, I mean, you also said, pick up a phone, uh, answer an email, uh, send a smoke signal. Do something. <laughs> <laughs> You can do uh, that. I want to say there are some that take advantage, so I'm very direct and ask, mm -hmm. "What are your strengths?" and then put them in charge of all of that while yeah. I do the rest. Well, look at here's the thing: I agree with you 100, percent and in theory, that does work. But the reality is, when I asked the person that I work with, "What can I do to help you?" 
because I know you've been doing this work for this family for 25 years, right? That's the other thing. There's a loyalty thing with this family. And yeah. I'm upset about them. But right. you know, she's in her late 70s. Okay. Mm. And mm. she gets insulted instead of, you know, like she's, I'm doing it. I can do it all. Yeah. And it's like, right? Yeah. Like, that's yeah. what I've got. And I'm like, mm -hmm. I am. I'm trying to be helpful. You know, I call you when, when I need some advice on how to deal with blah, blah, blah. And I do. Right. Like, she's been with them for 25 years, you know? Right. So she's got all of the information and skills that I don't know and don't have. Right. Let me ask you a question. Does she have, you know what FOMO is, right? Fear of missing out. Mm hmm So does uh -huh. she. I know what that meant. <laughs> <laughs> Carmen, does your co co-worker, like. Does she do that? Like, does she have fear of missing out on other things? Like, if you're talking with the other younger group or whatever about tech stuff, does she ever chime in and say, oh, well, how come I'm not included in this? I mean, we work in different states and mm -hmm. different things. So uh, I'll give you an example of what happened. So I will get a call saying that... Um, I don't know, I'm going to come up with a, a scenario that makes sense, but not give it away. Let's say the person is in charge of um, all of the maintenance people that uh, fix one of our clients' properties. You know, okay. they, they own property in another state in New York. Mm -hmm. And um, I don't have anything to do with that. I don't have oh. anything to do with who the vendors are, who the, I just know how much money. I need to dump in there, you know what I mean? Get an okay from our boss to dump into that account so we can to pay, pay the, the payroll. Bills. Yeah. Yeah. The bookkeeper mm -hmm. can pay the bills or whatever. Um, my whole job with this client is to be the interface between anyone and him, right? So I will deal with the lawyers, the CPAs, but my job is not maintenance of the property and the cars and the how you know, the the house staff. Okay. Right, right. That's her job. Cause she's there and that's what she's been doing for 25 years. So me getting a call from vendors or other staff members there because they're complaining. Yeah. Because that's they haven't been paid. The bookkeeper doesn't know who this vendor is. Cause they were just sent a bill with no reference. She's supposed to okay everything. You know what I mean? She's supposed to say yes or no. She doesn't answer emails. She doesn't text people. She doesn't get back to people fast enough. So when somebody's calling me about not getting paid and they just mowed the lawn, I'm not trying to say that's beneath me, but it's certainly but that's not that's not your job. Right? It's not, but it is my job to fix what's broken, right? So if there's a, a situation where vendors or staff people are not getting paid and the bookkeeper's frustrated because she's not getting full, that is my job. So I called her directly. Right. Mm -hmm. I called her directly and I tell her I'm getting all these. Blah, 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 and that's where she gets offended. So I don't know mm -hmm. if it's a fear of missing out. I. I say this with respect. I just think it's she hasn't kept up with stuff because mm -hmm. it's techy for her. Oh, you know? okay. So maybe people are emailing her. So, you know, she'll hire them or she'll say, yes, we'll pay you like verbally. Yeah. But then she doesn't answer people's emails because most people don't talk on the phone anymore. Mm -hmm. yeah, you know, I mean, true. I don't mean that in a bad way. In the work that we do, people are digital and emailing and, you know, chatting. It's and, faster. You, know? you can multitask with emails. It's just a new way of doing things. And that's what I think her problem is. I don't know if it's the fear of missing out. It could be that. I just don't know her personally. I've never mm -hmm. met her. And I know a lot of older people, they don't want to admit they don't know how to do something. That's yes. a big issue. That's a big. Oh, I'm not. I'm not an idiot. I know. I, know, I yeah. I know how to do that. Mm -hmm. Sure yeah. you do. <laughs> pride comes. What they pride comes before the fall. So you're mm -hmm. supposed to just be able to ask. You know, and yeah. it's hard. It's definitely hard. But they, people also they feel like when they have to ask you questions, it shows weakness and that shows mm -hmm. vulnerability. But they we don't we may not see it that way. But as the individual. Coming into the person, if you're insecure about something, it's sure it, it may feel like it's a weakness, and that yeah. may be an issue with a lot of our with a lot of our, our seniors. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Well, there was this one time where uh, this was like months ago, but this is what I realized: like, oh, she's so stressed. Um, 
I called her from my boss's home here in Malibu and my boss was in the room, but we have this speaker thing. Um, it's just like a speaker box where you can call and everyone in the room can hear. Right? Uh, yeah, like conference, conference box. Yeah. Yeah, but it's just, it's yes, anyways. Mm -hmm. But she didn't know that's where I was calling from. I mean, she knew I was calling from his number, but she, he didn't, she didn't realize that he was in the room. Uh, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. she got really snippety and really whatever. And then he was like, hey, I'm here. And what's going on? Are you okay? And then her tone completely changed. <laughs> I was like... Mm -hmm. yeah. mm -hmm. <laughs> I was like, and that's what I mean. Like, you try to be nice, <clears throat> you try to be grateful, and then they're frustrated for whatever reason. And yeah, yeah usually I can calm her down from getting. I'll be like, I'll take care of it. I'll deal with it. You know, but I think that's also bad because it now continues to be me. But yeah, he stepped in it, and it, he was more upset with the tone changing. I was too. At that point, I was like, wow. Because that just shows a lack of respect for anyone else she's talking to that might be upset. But that or yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's definitely an indication of how she talks to other people. Mm -hmm. uh, and and so if she's talking to if she's talking to you like that and she didn't and she got busted, just imagine how she's talking to other people, other vendors, mm -hmm. other Especially you know, the vendors. People. Yeah, people you have to and that, she is a representation of him. So if mm -hmm. that's what they're getting. It makes him look bad, and, and and he's gonna realize that eventually. And bless her soul, she's gonna have to, you know, move on to the it next is, phase. It is a money thing, and I only know because so many times um, she'll mention something, and she's like, "I know I'm gonna get fired. I know I'm gonna get fired." <laughs> like, well, if you now stop doing it, <laughs> like, what you, if you know, <laughs> then stop doing it. Like, right. then. <laughs> Come on. Exactly. <laughs> it's so funny. I just, it's your face, your energy. <laughs> <laughs> oh my God, that's hilarious. Yeah, no. she, uh, yeah. Though, but the, the, the one I work with, she has total FOMO. Like, FOMO. like we had um, a company donate a uh, standing desk to us and so you know whoever wanted oh, one grabbed no. one and there was one that was left over so our manager you know asked you know if you guys want it you can grab it blah 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 she said it to all of us well how come I can't have that I said you can if you want it you can grab it she's like well no I don't want it I said so why are you asking <laughs> she goes oh because God, I want to be God. included and I'm like but you were she told uh. everyone <laughs> And then at that point, I would have been like, ma'am, ma'am, excuse me, ma'am. You know, good hell well, you didn't want that. Why you can't even come over here? Just go, go, have, go have several seats. Mind your business. Just rest your nerves. Rest my nerves. We'll be all good. And then have a cup of coffee. Enjoy your day. Thank you very much. Thanks for stopping by. Is that fear of missing out or is it? Being kind of lonely and wanting people to pay attention to you. Is that kind of the same thing? I mean, I don't, I, fear of missing out feels different to me. I feel like sometimes a lot of us react a certain way because we don't feel included, right? It, I'm not making excuses for her. I'm just trying to look at, I come from this place where I'm starting to realize that at some point we all going to get older. We, there are just some facts that are feel negative, but I'm embracing it all. Like, <laughs> getting older we're all gonna die at some point like that's for sure Me? You know, for sure <laughs> no, but you know what i mean like there are just certainties we're all gonna get wrinkles we all gonna have our boobies drop whatever <laughs> okay maybe not you guys but you know what Botox, i mean <laughs> uh like <bulk. laughs> mario like, no, but wait, wait no but you know what i'm saying all of us yeah. are experience something and so how can we be more Full of grace. Yeah, grace. And it's your word of the day. Baby. It is. It's the word of the day. Grace. You know, try to be how more show grace. Of and I just don't know how to fix it. And um, I know it's not my job, but as a person who wants to grow all the time, as a good human being, I, I want to be more understanding. And I also think when we can understand things, maybe we 
can treat it differently or deal with it differently, you know? Um, but, but see, when, now here's the trick about grace. You can show a lot of grace, but then there's a point where people can take advantage of it. And it's like, now I'm, I'm leading with grace. Now I'm going to come with, I'm coming with grace. However, comma, you're not going to keep doing it. You know, because now after I've explained to you in a kind, loving way and we've, and I've dealt and I've come to you directly and I've spoken to you about what the issue is and you acknowledge that you hear me and you say, well, I know I'm going to get fired. Well, then you want to get fired. Then at that point, I'm done. At that point, I'm going to say, I'm going to leave you where you are. Be blessed and good luck and God speed. Right. Because, right. you know, there's, there's a, only a certain line. Right. Let me read what Alma just wrote. Yeah. Um, Sounds like she feels like she's better than and it should have been offered to her first so she can turn it down and then ask everyone else. That, no, that's true. I think that is part <gasps> Nazim. Oh my God, Nazim. How are you? Bonjour. Um, Mario <laughs> and Cynthia, I don't think you know Nazim, but he's an old friend from a different time. So, uh, over at a different app, which I'm never mentioning here again. <laughs> but we have not seen him. So it's like five o'clock in the morning, right, Nazim? <laughs> He's great. Um, Nazim, what time is it in Italy? Oh, they're like nine hours ahead, right? Yeah. It's yeah. There. Is yeah. It nine hours? Yeah, it's like always like two or three in the morning or something when he's uh, chit-chatting mm -hmm. on uh, an app. It's like I four in the morning. The yeah, I want you to come on the show when you're awake in the middle of the night <laughs> and your wife is asleep and oh, I'm not too bad. No, okay. that's it. So it's long. It's more at five fifty-four. Yeah. Um, come on and talk with us. Be a guest. Come on the show. But I'm so glad you're here. I miss you. I think Rick would agree, right? Don't we miss him a little bit? Oh yeah, and it seems a very cool dude for sure. You said a little bit. <laughs> what? <laughs> it's just being mean. Nazim, I'm going to send you an invite um, next Thursday, but you can come whenever you want. I'll send it to you at your um, Facebook or uh, your email address. We'd love to have you on the show. Okay, deal, deal. Um, and if you can't do it at this time, you and I can have a private lounge. We'll have Rick on too. And, you know, and chit-chatting. Whatever. How rude. I can't so be in the private lounge. How the nerve. <laughs> okay. <laughs> Me and you left out, Mario. <laughs> I'm telling you, like, like, huh? the, look, the, like the redheaded stepchild, the, the children that we are, you know. It sounds like FOMO. Yeah. Sounds like FOMO. <laughs> no, you know what? It's forget y'all. How about that? <laughs> <laughs> okay, perfect. <laughs> we'll definitely do it next week for sure. I promise. That'd be great. I know it's funny because the story that Cynthia just said, right? I was reading, uh, like, a, it was a fictional story, and this woman was like just mad as a hornet. And these people were going to a wedding, and she's like, Why are you so mad? Da, da, da. And then they came to find out because she didn't get invited to the wedding. And they're like, Oh, well, pff, here, you can go in my place. That's fine. Oh, I don't want to go. I don't want to go. I just yeah. want the invitation. Right. No. no. Oh, my God. I, I've gotten that too. I can take that from another because I remember when I was younger, I was not invited to hang out with like um, Melanie had kind of mentioned the cool kids. Mm. Um, I was kind of an outsider, but also thought of as kind of cool because I was rehearsing. I was I wasn't always hanging in the hood with everybody else, you know, um, but I remember like then they would be like having parties or going wherever or hanging out and they wouldn't invite me. And I would feel like, oh, my God, nobody even thought of me or whatever. It's not like you had to be invited to the neighborhood chat, you know, hanging out on the street. <laughs> but if you weren't invited or no one gave you a heads up that there was a special time that we were all going to be doing something, I felt really bad. <laughs> I just wanted to be asked. I probably would have never gone anyway. Right. Yeah. But, that's, you know, that's, we just yeah. had so many parties, you know, underground parties or whatever, which is a place I would have never wanted to be anyways. But not being asked made me feel like crap. Mm -hmm. It is like that. I get I've been that way to where, you know, I just wanted to be asked. Most time I'm going to say no anyway. It's just the, the, the thought of being asked. But you by know, the way, I was 15 or 16 at the time. So I just want to clear that up. <laughs> Oh, I'm 50 something and I still feel that way. <laughs> <laughs> like just now when you cried about not being invited to the private lounge? Yes. <laughs> uh. 
but I'm always quick to say, like, if it is somebody does ask me to do something or whatever, and I'm like, thank you for thinking of me, you know, but no, but thank you for thinking of me. Thank you. Yeah. Yeah. I appreciate it. Thank you, but no, thank you. And then sometimes I will go and I'll be the life of the party and they'll all be grateful I want you. You know what I'm saying? (laughs) (laughs) Okay. I'm sorry. All right. You guys didn't think that was funny. I did. If Tony were here, he would think it's funny because he'd be like, bougie, bougie. Alma um, wants to know if you have um, any say in firing that person. Oh, I missed Alma. I'm so sorry. I was just looking at Nazim's comments. <laughs> Do you have any say in that? Per- oh, if not, if not, then your fee should go up because your job duties are expanding. You're so amazing. Nope. Um, so let me explain what I do because that would make more sense. So I... People will say I'm a business manager, but, you know, anybody can say they're a business manager and just like a life coach and, you know, anybody can tell them. I actually, when people hire me, they know I do organizational management. And the reason why I call it that is because I come into any situation and I just try to fix what's broken. So, for example, my biggest job is firing and hiring people. Come on, Um, bro. So yeah, that's, that's the major thing that I do. I also come in and make suggestions on procedures and, um, you know, depending on what kind of, uh, client it is, it has a little bit of tweaky stuff. Like sometimes I just do, um, you know, being the front face for, especially my A-list clients, you know, that are celebrities, they're not going to go and sit at the bank to talk to them about, moving money around or investing in something else. So I'll go get the information. I'll be the middle person and then go deliver it to them with all the suggestions, then go back. Right. So it's like that middle person, but yeah. And I I do a lot of overall management and that's pretty much it. So yeah, I I do have a say in if they get fired, but that's all in the bling amount I charge. (laughs) As you should. Now with this particular person, are you at that point or are you going to get continue to show a little bit more grace? Oh, I always show her grace because she is an elder. Right. Um, But she also knows that uh, just by her own mistake, but I have suggested that they think about a different way we can use her. So this is part of the problem that people don't understand. You have to use people's strengths. Strength. Yeah, I agree. It's not any, that's any age. You can't be like, oh, Rick, I know that. I mean, we love your personality. We think you're great. We'd love to hire you. We're going to put you in charge of all the accounting. Uh, No No. offense. I don't know if you're an accountant, but that would be like asking me to be a a tech IT person. I don't know jack about IT stuff. You know what I mean? Right. IT, I would take, but numbers, no. No, no, but you see what I mean? What did he say? I see that with what? I said IT, I would do because I've done it before, but anything with numbers, nah. Yeah, but you see what the point I'm trying to say, right? No, I. I, There is a longevity of a relationship. These people, their strength, the reason why I keep working for them is they are loyal. And that tells me a lot about the quality of who they are. So the conversation I've had with them is not to fire her, but the conversation I've had with her and him um, is it might be time to change her position, uh, what she does for you all, uh, maybe give her a little bump in money, because I think that's also what's stressing her out. Like she's been getting paid the same amount of money for a very long time. Oh, Um, wow. It's not their fault. It's a little bit more complicated. She was hired for somebody else right? Uh, than the thing. And then it's been so long. Things have changed over, over time. So nobody was like supervising that whole situation. Yeah. And she is part of the family in a way because it's been so long. So mm. that's on them. I made my it's, suggestions. Yeah, it's complicated. It, it seems like it's really complicated. It's not very cut and dry. Right. Also, Alma just made a great point, or they need an assistant. What I suggested, because she, she, I think she would interpret that as, I'm not good at my job, and I'm going to get fired. She would, st- right? No. Of, yeah. Oh, but she she's maybe we get an assistant for that state house. You know what I mean? Yeah. For the, the house that may get somebody else to assist in all things, but not say it's for her, but say no, it's just, for her. Yeah, yeah. It's for, yeah, yeah, you bring them in under her, so you'll say... You're her, you're the supervisor. That means it gives you a title. So, yeah, I mean that's that's you know that's a good idea. But it's just maybe 
the approaches to how you bring the person in, you know, and like you said, just give them a bump. It, it, even it's not a lot. It's, Give them a bump, make them feel like a supervisor, and then you're getting that she's getting the extra help she needs. Yeah, but that's like the last part that I have to do with it. Like at that point, like I make suggestions to my clients, it's on them to pursue it. You know what I mean? Some are like, whatever you want, Carmen, go ahead, do it. Because they know I will go and fire them myself, right? They're not going to do it, so I'll be the bad guy, and I'm fine. I get paid to do that. But if they're, you know, taking their time or don't want to, I, I got nothing else to say. I'm curious, how do you fire people? How do you deliver the bad news? <laughs> well, first of all, it's not that quick. So, like, let's say I was going to fire you from whatever position you're working for. Rude. I mean, it'll be hard. That's so beautiful. You know what I mean? Like, your heart and soul. And on that private lounge podcast we did last week that you can find at YouTube, all about the joy. Boom, so. there it is. Plug it. <laughs> Come um, see me. <laughs> Which I made sure that I clicked like on, like everybody right. should. Smash hey, that like hey, button. That's right. Like that shit. Okay. <laughs> <laughs> I just did that like Chris Gale did, right? A really nice moment, and then you mess it. <laughs> hey, um, but it wouldn't be abrupt. I would, you know, because not even by law, but out of decency, you want to give people chances, but you really do have to give people at least three uh warnings before you actually so they're not surprised by the time it happens doesn't mean right, they're not annoyed so usually i am i am hired when everyone's frustrated and they're going to get fired anyway not that they know but they've tried like they think they've tried everything get him a cardboard box <laughs> and <his 10> minutes- <laughs> with wow. a security escort Wow, that's a was <laughs> name. Wow. I like that. Just walk in. He's coming to done. the office with a box on your desk. You <laughs> bet his shit. You got to go. Sign here. Take your shit. No, no. Hit the clipboard. Um, sign your shit. Get out. Have a good day. So the first time, I have it seen feels that. like it's I have not seen a it. warning. It feels like I'm just trying to tell you what I need you to do instead of what you've been doing. Right. You know what I mean? So I'll be like, Mario, you know what? I know that this may be the way you've always done it, but I need you to step it up. I need it to be on time. I need it to be accurate. And if you need any help with that, let me know. Because I'm happy to sit here and help you come up with a different way on how to do blah, 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 blah. Exactly. That's warning number one. Yeah. Um, You're never confused that that's warning number one because they know I've been hired specifically to fix and it's it's always usually a little gossipy that they know I'm going to fire somebody. Mm-hmm. Okay. Second, the second warning is usually like a little bit more uh, curt, if you will, a little bit more forward. I yep. bring them to a separate room. I bring the boss and if he or she is around, we have a conversation that this is the second warning. Um, you promised that you would work with Carmen. You prom- you know, by this date, we said we reevaluate. So this is abruptly the second time and second warning that we need you to do blah, 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 blah. You know what I mean? Like you can mm-hmm. see by the third time, they know I'm frustrated. There's no way you can tell and not tell that I'm frustrated. And cause now I'm being a little bit more whatever. And I'm like, okay, so here's the conversation. This is the last time in 30 days, we need this to be fixed. Like one, one, the, the biggest thing sometimes is that people think that they can kind of um, hide that they've done it when they actually haven't. Um, oh, wait a minute. Wait a minute. Hold on a second. Um, but the third, the third time, they have a timetable. It needs to be met. We have a real evaluation and there's never a confusion that they're about to get fired. We, I usually have papers for them right. to sign and to get or whatever yeah. and a severance package. And that's what I'm talking about. So it's really three times warning, fourth time we're done. So yeah. um, Alma just said that would actually be such a power move. You walk in with supplies, a stack yeah. of moving boxes and tape and say, not sure who's going to need these, but always <laughs> 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 People can sue us. <laughs> when do they slash your car time? <laughs> <laughs> uh, that's funny. Well, here's the thing. My clients, actually, something bad has happened before, and it wasn't my car, um, but somebody got so upset uh, that they, uh, and this is why nobody has my address. Not even my clients know where I live. I have a P.O. box on purpose. As um, you should. Because that time was like, it was earlier in my career. That's what I'll say. And they came to my house and left like dead flowers one week. And it was really, 
It was a little scary. It was a little yeah. scary. So that's why I changed. Um, I actually moved out of one place because of that wow. and, never, and vowed never, ever, ever to uh, give out my address to anyone again. Yeah, no. That's when, <laughs> no, that's when the um, other Mario shows my, up. My clients know in the stipulation if something happens to me because of this, that they are, uh, it, you know, not everyone always agrees to it, but it's a clause in my contract. Yeah. Um, because it is a dangerous thing to do, especially if people because, look at the problem usually isn't the person. Who's yeah. getting hired. It's usually the management supervisor or boss who didn't train them correctly. So right. that, yeah. I'm telling you nine times out of 10, that's the problem. You know, say aloud for the people in the back. <laughs> <laughs> you, like the Rolling Stones song, bring me dead flowers in the morning. <laughs> Man, you do something like that to me, it's it, it's a wrap for you. It's because uh, I'm a different person. I come off nice and sweet, and, you know, got a little soft voice, but then English. Know, you think of yourself. <laughs> like, no, no, Inglewood will show up. No, don't <laughs> play. <laughs> right. Right. Don't uh, play. Inglewood will show up. Yeah. I actually showed Grace this morning. So, like, uh, so a customer asked to ask for a quote for a particular item. Didn't say how many. They just said, can you send me a quote for blah, blah, blah. Mm -hmm. So I wrote him back and I said, can you please send me all your billing and shipping information and how many you're looking for? And I'll go in my system and set up a quote to send you. Right. Right. Mr. Smarty Pants writes me back and says, well, how are you going to give him a quote when you don't know how many he wants? So instead of saying, dummy, did you not read what I wrote? I said, exactly. So I'm going to write him again for clarification. See, I was <laughs> there you go. Very nice. <laughs> I gave grace. They, that is great. That's great. <laughs> I like it better, but we can do both. <laughs> <laughs> We're all about the joy. <laughs> oh, no, don't mess with Tony's Tony's logo. Come on. Um, yeah, I just think it's look at some people get mad at me, but that's why over time I've learned how to do it differently. Um mm -hmm. and I try to be as helpful as possible. I try to be whatever so that they're, they're not confused. Like the last person I, I fired mm. two people in the past month. Wow. Um, you on a roll. <laughs> um, and you know what, when I had the conversation with them or, you know, our bosses and me had the conversation with them, they didn't get upset. They knew they, already they knew it was coming. Yeah. And and we give them a nice severance so they have a few months to figure out what's next, you know. And yeah, because the people I work for all have money. This would be a different ball game if it was a startup or whatever. I don't take those clients because I I I can't fire or hire someone who doesn't have enough money. Like you can't hire a CFO for eighty thousand dollars. No, know? nowhere. Not how Nowhere. it works out here, you know? So if you ain't got the money, you're going to have to get a really, really, really young, young, up and coming, hoping to be an accountant. You know what I mean? That will take right. you to the land, you know what I mean? Like, yeah. um, and then become CFO someday when you make money. But I can't be going to somebody who's making $200,000, $250,000 minimum as a CFO of some organization out here and say, yes. Um, like, <laughs> no, <come laughs> Terminator, it's the fixer. <laughs> the fixer. She is the fixer. You know what? That's so negative, Nazim. <laughs> so basically, when you fire them, you say hasta la vista, baby. Baby, yeah, no, I don't. And after step two, she'd be like, "I'll be back." Yeah, right. I actually hate my job. I'm just good at it, and you all know that that's not what I want to be doing. So, well, no, I know, but yeah. you're just so dead going good at what you do. So, you know. <laughs> it's not that I'm I'm just saying it's easy to be the bad guy or the bad cop so the bosses look good that really is what it is that I do if you want so to. do you like being the villain hmm. I can't hmm. be the villain it's not I what like, I like. sometimes it's fun to be the villain <laughs> I've always heard <laughs> actors love playing villains yeah they do thank you Rick but <laughs> I don't like it because at the end of the day, what I, what I do, no matter how well or nice or with a, all that warning, it hurts people. Yeah. It's not really what I want. You know what I mean? Like it's not all I do. I don't just hire and fire people. The other parts of my job, I actually don't mind because I get to meet a lot of people and I get to be on set a lot with a couple of my clients and, and that's a different ball game, right? That's playing interference with 
media or PR people or agents, but that's yeah. more fun for me because at least it's really industry based, you know. And but yeah. see, that's the fun part of your job. You know what I'm saying? That's the, that's well. I mean, to me, it, to energy, me, the energy is yeah because it's the industry I love, but I still yeah. don't like being that. You know, I'd yeah. rather be performing or or doing this podcast regularly. You know what I mean? So you were, like, you were trying to explain your job to a six year old, kind of be like, I just help them run everything better. That's it. I missed what you just asked because I was reading Alma say the joyous part. The joyous part. I think she was clarifying from Mario. I'll say, she I'll say if, what he if you him. explain your try to explain your job to like a six year old, you could just say, I try to help the company run everything better. I never admit to children or anyone. <laughs> no, I'm just saying, if you had to. Yeah, I would say I manage things. I don't know. How did you get to? That's not on the list. That's not on the list, people. Well, Half the stuff on the stand on the list. What you talking about? Because I'm getting sad because I know I'm branded as that. I know that's what I do, but it's not who I am, and it's not what I want to do to make a living. But you just said it. It's not who you are. It's your it's your job. And that's no, I know what we're talking it. about it after I just yeah. did it for eight hours. <laughs> no, well, let's okay, let's move on. So let's okay, talk let's, about let's, joyful let's, stuff. Let's, back, let's, back, to, back to the list. Well, I think we I don't know where I am on the list now because you all messed it up. No. Oh god. <laughs> Can you imagine if somebody was about the to get best fired? Performance and a podcast goes to exactly <laughs> here's your award. <laughs> Can you imagine if somebody knows they're about to get fired by Carmen and be like, but aren't you the all about the joy lady? Joy, aren't you all about the joy lady? You know what? Everybody now does know that I do this, but they knew before it was branded as that, that I am creating. Like, I don't lie to any of my clients or anybody I work for. Um, Alma just said, it's what you do, not who you are. I know, but it. I can say that all I want in theory, but at the end of the day, I spend at least eight hours every day, sometimes the weekend, and I can say it's not who I am, but it's mostly what I think about. You know what I mean? And it's really hard. Like all the sayings we say, I yeah. always wonder like, why do people say them? Because they're not really true. They're just all habitual things we keep saying, but I don't. Yeah. Sometimes like, we say stuff as affirmations to make ourselves feel better. And to, it's, it's self-encouragement for me. You know, it, it might not always be true, but I'm like, okay, I'm about to go down this, I'm about to go down this black hole you're not this Mario. You're not that you're this, you are, you're, and then I start giving myself affirmations to pull myself out of it to get on with the rest of my day. Cause otherwise mm-hmm. we can, we can, what was they say? Uh, spiral the drain and we don't want to do that. So let's come out of this spiral mm-hmm. and change the subject to something else. <laughs> so look at okay. that. Dude, like send me the list for next Thursday. I'll bring my own cardboard box. <laughs> <laughs> Yeah. <laughs> that's it so the list is usually done thursday morning maybe <laughs> <laughs> sometimes we just wing it so yeah you, know, you need to show yourself some grace um, there's that word again mm-hmm. it's the word of the day you, you said yeah, it. You i it. think i do but i'm also you know we started talking about it i think uh how do you say this uh say this, it okay, like as a dancer i'll give you an example i I know to my heart and my soul that I was a dancer, a performer, and I will always be that in my heart. But the fact that I'm actually not doing it or getting paid for it or just having the time to do community theater or something, you know what I mean? Right. Is the depressing part. And I don't know if the word depressing is right, but I'm saying there's a, there's a conflict and there's only like, okay, I show myself grace. Yeah. (laughs) But then, but then I understand what you're saying because, Growing up as a young person, that's I always my goal was to always be working behind the camera. I didn't never want to be an on screen talent, I always wanted to be a director, I always wanted to be a producer. That was my dream coming up. And because you know, of everything else, all my other cha- health challenges, everything else that got in the way, you know, it, it was it's a dream deferred, but I, I still call it a dream. So, you know, I never, but then I have to ask myself, okay, what am I doing to make sure that I'm working on my dream? And I haven't done anything lately. All my clients know that March of 2025, I'm no longer working for them. That's what I did this year. And wow. Yeah. So that is what I'm doing for it. But I think 
Um, and Alma just said, you mourn it. I know. That's what I'm doing right now. And you guys are telling me to show myself some grace. I'm like, I am mourning it. <laughs> like, I, I am. Like, um, <laughs> yeah, so, so that that is what the difference is. That is why, even though I'm tired and really just want to sleep when I come home or just rest and watch TV or something, I will. I will do what I need to do. And then I'm up at 12 in the morning or 1 in the morning editing this show or doing what I need to do or, you know, getting a trademark or fixing the website or Rick knows that I, you know, just started a store and we're testing out some of the stuff. So I asked him to order some, you know what I mean? Like I am in the little bit of time. So I get, I, I committed to myself this year. I can't believe I'm admitting this, but I mean, I don't mind. Maybe it inspires somebody else. I was sick and tired of mourning this situation and finding every excuse and reason why I am validating why I am in this situation and then saying, okay, so why am I still in it when I know I don't, what can I do? So I gave myself a timeline and not just in my head. I told each one of my clients when I signed my new contracts and they're all for the same date, even though the contracts are different. Right. Yeah. I said, March, 2025, I'm out. You know, one client was like, but that's only nine months. I'm like, exactly. (laughs) <laughs> exactly. Like I didn't make any changes or whatever for anyone. And um, my hope, I'll be honest, is to make money. I, I have enough money for like four or five months to get by. If I, I don't want to, because then I'll have nothing and I'll be calling you all and be like, hey, friend. <laughs> 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 Can you bail me out? I, I, I need money for bail. <laughs> Can, I need bail money. I need bail money, but I but I'm just saying. But my hope is by then, at least getting income. Like I've started writing the book for all about the joy, and I have someone helping me with just kind of um, editing. And I don't. I'm not expecting to make a lot of money, but I just want right. to start something and. So I started that. I have the whole template out for the chapters. I also um, have invested in this so that hopefully there'll be something. Maybe somebody will help sponsor us. Maybe somebody will help. Maybe money, some money will come in from a few things of stores that I'm trying to create. Um, Yeah. I don't know. I'm just trying to pull from everywhere. You know what I mean? To see if there's ways to do this. But I really think if I had eight hours a day to just focus on me and what I want to do, even if it's just for two months, um, I think I can get some, there's too many people making money as content creators, as, you know, whatever it is, right. Podcast right. or YouTube, whatever, you know what I'm saying? Like there's mm-hmm. so many more ways to make money. Um, even writing, you can, you can submit on Fiverr or on all of those other places that are like temporary contract work. Like, okay. uh, you know, I'm just saying if everyone else can be making a minimum of five grand a month or whatever, or you know, like the, people are making fifty, sixty thousand dollars a month on crap. You know what I mean? Help um, me understand how these inst- these Instagram kids are making millions of dollars. I'm like, make it make sense. Like, so I don't know, and I, I don't even need that much. I, I, I mean, oh, I, I, can, I, I can live off of five thousand dollars a month. That's why I won't buy a new car. That's why yeah. you don't see me dressing up fancy. That's why I'm really trying to prioritize the absolute minimum I need to stay in the place I'm at. And, mm-hmm. and you see what I'm saying? Like, yeah. 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 So, yeah. Mm-hmm. Uh, Alma, thank you. She said, good for you. And it seems that that's around the corner. Well, wow. I know, I know either that or I win the lottery between now and then. I'm going to say invest in yourself and bet on yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But... Because if you don't believe in yourself, who else is going to believe in you? Well, Come on now. <laughs> Come on, church. Let the church say amen. Amen. <laughs> amen. <laughs> amen. What keeps you guys from not fulfilling whatever? Well, can't say that about Cynthia because she's hustling to get to the dead world, the dead body she's... world that she wants to work in. <laughs> she wants to see dead people and she's going to see them. Damn I it. Know. <laughs> what do you all think of what prevents people from actually doing what they want to ultimately be doing? What do you think it is? Fear? Fear of reject fear of failure, fear of rejection for me. Um Interesting. It's because because I did it before and I was told no, and I was told I wasn't good. I was told all the negative, all these people poured negativity into me. So it it kind of it weighed me down. 
And so I always, yes, the dead world. The dead world. And, so, and so it, you know, I'm not trying to go to the dead world. I'm trying to stay here and try to be lifted up. I'm just like reading what Alma just said. I'm sorry. <laughs> no, 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 I know. <laughs> so for me, it was all, all the negativity of people pouring into me, negative stuff. So now all this time is, it's held me down and mentally and physically. Mm-hmm. And so now I'm trying to, you know, I'm taking a turn and, um, you know, trying to push myself out and I'm starting to take steps and I'm making phone calls. Actually, in the last month, I've been making phone calls to try to, to make changes. And I'm just waiting to see what where it goes. I'm not speaking on it until something happens. Okay. Oh, what, what, one thing I, I forgot to tell you guys. One thing that brought me joy this week is I was on Let's Make a Deal. Boom. There you go. I know, but okay, yeah, he was on it last Friday. Okay, here's the thing, though, Mario. I was gonna tell everyone, but I couldn't find it because it. I think it aired wherever it aired. But unless you have something, yeah, it, it it's on Paramount Plus. If that's you have, it a, is. I don't have yeah, that. Okay. yeah, it's on Paramount. It came like if you missed it the day of, it's on. It's the only place you can watch is on Paramount Plus. So I taped my segments, and. I don't even look the same. My wife was like, "You don't. It's not even the same person." Because I've lost so much. Me on my on my drive, so I can. Yeah, yeah, yeah. I'll send it to I you. I don't think I can post it though because it's probably trademarked, right? It's a show um, you can't. Well, I I posted it on on my Instagram because it's me. The whole show? No, not the whole show. Just my segment. How did I miss it? I didn't see it on Instagram. Did you guys see it on Instagram? No. I put it on my story. I didn't put. I didn't post it. I just put it but on I, my story. I would have marked something. I would have. Okay, we'll talk yeah, about that I later. Post, Does that want you to I'll send it, it to me? I'll, I'll, yeah, I'll, I'll put it. Because I, I didn't post it, post it. But I put it on my Instagram stories and my Facebook stories. So if you saw it that day, it was on my stories. But yeah, if you, yeah. You All right. It. Well, let's talk later. Because if you could send it to me on my drive or whatever, I can then send it to everyone else. I can, but just a quick story from that whole day. Um, so when I got on the show, um, I met, of course, I talked to Wayne Brady. I told him about my wife's school. I don't know if you guys know this story. Um, no, I told him. Said it to me in the po- I think it's in the podcast. Yeah, but, but I don't think, well, I don't I know if anybody edited. else knows. It might have been, yeah. I don't know. But anyway. That oh, no, 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 I, that's a lie. You told me afterwards in the green room. When we yeah, were I didn't tell you on the show. Yeah. So I, um. When I talked to, to Wayne, I told him about my wife and her school. Where they were actually going to see the Wiz. So at that moment, I told him it was the first time a lot of our black and brown kids were actually going to see a, a like a Broadway show or, or in that form. And he was so inspired by that. He wanted to meet all the kids after the show. So, but the day of the show, he was sick. He ended up having a, some type of virus, lung, lung infection that whole week. So he wasn't in the show that week. But what he did was he sent he asked uh, Deborah Cox and Alan Mingo Jr. to come and talk to the kids after the show. That so is he, so awesome. It's so and it was so nice and so kind. And they talked to the kids. The kids were first like, "Who are they?" And then I said, "It's Glenda and the Wiz." And they were like, "Oh!" And then it, the, the whole. Their faces just lit up. It was a great experience, and I'm nice forever grateful. Offense to Wayne Brady, but that was the better get. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> actually, no shade. Fine. You know, no shade to Wayne Brady, but yeah, Deborah Cox was was a great get. So, and <laughs> she's awesome. yeah, and and actually, Alan Mingo Jr. He's a like a big Broadway vet, and I didn't mm-hmm. know his pedigree until I really looked him up, and then I watched him on because I don't know because like. I watched Doom Patrol on HBO, and he was on Doom Patrol, and I didn't realize it was him. I know you don't. It's it's. Oh, I, saw, I saw it. Who was he? Yeah, he was the the drag queen in in. Uh, oh, okay. Yeah, and then he was also he won. I, no, he was he was on Kinky Boots also on Broadway. Oh, he replaced really? in the yeah, original. He, no, he replaced. Uh, what's the gentleman's name? Billy Porter. You know, Billy Porter oh, was on. Billy Porter, yeah, yeah. Oh Billy my. Por- God, you're kidding me. Yeah, so Billy Porter was the orig- originally in Kinky Boots, and Alan Mingo Jr. took Billy Porter's place and played it for a, for a long time right after him. So yeah. he's like, he's got he's can got we, a pedigree. Can we say just, he's underrated. Billy Ooh. Porter is amazing. 
He's amazing. Amazing. Yeah. He's so he's, underrated. I love dope. everything about him. Everything. He, he's funny to me. He's very funny. Mm. And he's very talented. And like I didn't and like the first time I heard Billy Porter it was when uh Elma and I were watching um Find first last class. We're, we're gonna Find jump off too because we're at the 130 mark, which you know. Yeah, we're gonna get off. Yeah. A lot of editing. Find yeah. Sorry, yeah, he was uh he was in the, he sang in the first wives club and he sang the song love is on the way and that was the first time i had ever heard billy porter i remember that moment because i was like that's an amazing song and it stuck with I me don't, I, don't, I don't think i ever saw that is that with the three women? with bet midler diane keaton and goldie hahn it's yep. hysterical it is a I'm funny so funny I movie I don't remember it. Remember yeah it. i'm just kidding it's i just don't remember it um, and then they, did a re- then, then they did a, 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 a black version on BET with hmm. Jill Scott. Yeah, yeah. For, for real. They did a, a, with uh, Jill Scott, uh, Michelle Buteau, and Ryan Michelle Bethea, which is Sterling was K. Brown's funny? wife. It was funny. Yeah, it was definitely, it wasn't like, it wasn't, it wasn't the movie. They just, they took the concept of the three divorce, the three right. divorce days getting back at their husbands. Right. So. Oh, I think Same I do that movie now. You you know what I'm confusing it with? Whatever movie, um, what's the what's the country singer Dolly Parton? There was right. Remember that? Oh, was you're a, thinking like nine to five. Oh my god! Oh that yeah, that's what I'm thinking of. Okay, you're sorry. thinking nine to five. Yeah, because there was three women for that. That was Lily Tomlin, was Dolly Parton, oh, yeah. and Jane Fonda. That, yeah. That's a group of people, huh? <laughs> like, yeah. I, I do remember. Okay, that's what I'm confusing it with. Okay, cool. Yeah, yeah. So we are at the 130 mark, which I didn't even see the time go by. I wasn't even paying attention to it. So it's hard to cut us off when we're having fun. I'll stop talking. Shut up. <laughs> you know, I've been talks all the time. So like, I think it's you and me together that's bad. Like, Yeah. Yeah, yeah, I'll shut up. Or I mean, good. <laughs> you know. uh, notice how Cynthia and Rick are not like, oh my God, it's not you guys at all. No, no, <laughs> it's, they said it's not you, it's me. <laughs> <laughs> so we're going to say goodbye right now. Please mm-hmm. like, share, subscribe. It's the Rick Smash version. that button. Uh huh. Mm-hmm. And uh, well, I want to say thank you again. I'm going to give a shout out to LinkedIn because we keep getting followers on there. And I just think it's, Freaking awesome. I just, I'm awesome. stunned. It's a trickling, but it's a constant trickle. Mm. So it's really great. So thank you for that. And, and thanks um, everybody for listening to, me, to our private lounge. Boom. There you go. Oh. <laughs> <laughs> uh, Cynthia, thank you, Rick, as always. I appreciate you. you. And Mario, I love that you're here. Thank you. Bye, everyone. <laughs> Remember, it's all about the joy. Thanks for stopping by All About the Joy. Be better and stay beautiful, folks. Have a sweet day.